Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Joao. Hi. Hi. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, just some housekeeping notes, Joao, before we get started, yes. okay? okay. Um, so, uh, welcome back, everyone. I uh, would just like to tell you that this session is uh, also a webinar as the previous uh, one. So, participants can only interact through the chat box or the Q&A box. Um, so, Joao will be presenting almost to the end. So, hopefully we'll have five minutes um at the end for question and answers okay so uh at the end so uh, please uh, feel free to write them down in the q a uh, box okay um so media, we, sorry yes. to interrupt you don't forget that uh, i'm going to ask those two questions that yes, i'll ask yes. you want to write your, in the chat yes yeah. your <laughs> your voice your eyes yeah, yeah. <laughs> your no, ears no, those two questions in the chat box then you'll tell me what everything okay. remember Okay. okay, yes, very sure. <laughs> yeah, um, we also would like to uh, remind our participants that the elections for RP are still on till 4.30 through our webpage. So if you have received uh, an RP email dated uh, 21st of September informing you about the procedures. Uh, so if you haven't voted yet, please uh, don't forget to do it. Um, so Again, welcome, Maria João. So glad you are here with okay. us today. Thank you. Um, Maria João also belongs to, uh, I think it was born, I think now I'm sure it was born at the conference. Uh, she belongs to the Appy tribe. Yeah. Maria Maybe you don't know this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she also belongs to the Appy tribe. Uh, yeah. And she will present us uh, with a lot of hand on activities bearing in mind the motto, include in diversity, right? Yes. Okay, so over to you, Maria Joao. <laughs> okay, um, nice to be with you again. I'm just going to try to introduce the, the session um, for just a few seconds. The thing is this session I have already done. So I've um, um, given this session in Santiago do Cassin two years ago or something, but then, Albert said because there weren't many people we could repeat and I think it's 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 nice and so we, I think we can do it. So that's the reason we've decided that this would be the one. So I'm now going to start sharing and um, and start with a good work. Okay. <laughs> Let me just do it properly. Yes, everything is optimized and uh, we'll start. Okay, so um, as I said before, uh, as I said before, we are just going to uh, talk about activities that, uh, in a certain sense, we can say that are inclusive. They are inclusive because they they relate to more than one skill, not only the language skills, which obviously are the most important, bearing in mind uh, that we are language teachers, but also other types of skills. Um, as I told you, um, this uh, session was um, first was done uh, in person, live, and the first activity that I had was, let me see if this comes down. Um, okay, I hope so. I have Dila Gaspar with a hand on, I don't know, Didier, can you um, ask her to wait till the end or something? Yeah, because then the... This bar down there doesn't leave. Okay. So uh, why did I keep the ice breaking activity? Because uh, for some of you, probably you're still in the beginning of the year. And so there, there are opportunities for doing this. Um, we did it in Santiago Casai and it's, it's quite fun and it's easy. It only involves listening and speaking and we call it salt and pepper activity. Why? Salt and pepper is uh, an obvious pair of things. And uh, this is based in obvious pairs of things like salt and pepper, sun and moon, and so on. So the preparation, when, when you see a T, it means that it is from the point of view of the teacher or it is something that the teacher does. When you see S or ST, it's students. So uh, the teacher must prepare, coming up with pairs of things like um, salt and pepper, sun and moon, or so on. 
and you have to separate the pairs and write only one of them per piece of paper. One of those stick-on notes will be fine. So just write sun in one, moon in the other. Then you have to tape the, the stick-on notes to, onto the back of each student. And then the activity. You have to give the instructions. So the idea is for the students to walk around the classroom and they can only ask yes or no questions. So questions that can be answered with a yes or no because otherwise it doesn't make sense. And that's the rule of the, of the game. And they do that till they find out the word they have on their own back, okay? Then when they finally know who or what they are, uh, the next step is to find their pair, okay? So when finally they go, they go around again and when moon finds sun or when pepper finds salt, then they sit down together and um, they, they have to learn three facts about each other. Then in the big group, um, each student tells uh, the three facts that they have learned about the other student. It's quite fun. Uh, it takes um, a while, but uh, for the beginning of the year, I think it's quite good, especially for classes that don't know each other quite well. And it's not very, um, and I say it's not very emotional because it's not very uh, personal. It's uh, quite impersonal. So I think it's a good one. I've done it and it has worked. Okay, now, um, this is where I, I would, sorry. This is where I would like you to think and write something in the chat. Uh, and then, then I'll ask Nidia uh, what you have written. So these are two quotes. One of them is on speaking and the other one is on listening. So uh, they both raise issues, obviously, and uh, they raise issues from the point of view of the teacher and from the point of view of the student. What I would like you now is for you to uh, walk into the student's shoes and think uh, what issues uh, these two uh, quotes raise from your point of view as a student. And so, and you can write the three words or concepts in the chat and um, Nidia will give me feedback on that. So the thing is, uh, the first one is um, quite well known. It was written by Mark Twain and he says, it's better to keep your mouth closed than, and have other things you are ignor ignorant than to open it and remove all doubt. And the other one is listening is not merely not talking. It means taking a vigorous human interest in what is being told to us. You can listen like a blank wall or like a splendid auditorium where every sound comes back fuller and richer. So bearing in mind the student's point of view, can you tell me which three words, concepts come to your mind by um, the issues that are raised on them? Joao, someone has uh, already Good. typed self-awareness, yes. self-consciousness, shyness. Yes, <laughs> yes. Quiet yes. students, mm -hmm. self-esteem. Yes. Fear. Yes. Fear again. Mm -hmm. Confidence. Or lack of. Yes. Challenges. Active, yes. li active listening, lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. Enrichment. That. Okay, so we don't have to um, go further that. The idea is, it, if we look at the words that you have written or concepts, you will see that most of them are related to, emotion, to emotions. They are, they are in fact related to emotions. We, uh, sometimes we tend to forget that, uh, but emotions are really important and they are part of our life. Uh, it's not merely um, the, the language skills, but also what else surround us, surrounds us. And we are emotional animals. Uh, anyhow, let's go to the next one. You probably know Howard Gardner. Um, everyone, I think everyone knows him. But Howard, Howard Gardner, he developed the idea of the multiple intelligence. I, I always talk about this because I think it's so, so important. And besides, Nowadays, when we think about inclusive uh, learning or inclusive teaching, whatever, um, you have to bear this in mind. 
Anything that is worth teaching can be presented in many different ways. These multiple ways can make use of our multiple intelligence. So what does this mean? That we all have um, one of this multiple intelligence that is probably more developed than the others. It doesn't mean that we don't have others. Uh, but um, uh, as, so when we think from our point of view as, te as teachers, we have a, no a natural tendency that has to do with our multiple intelligence. So if, if I'm uh, um, a person that um, normally reads through audio, if my ears are my source for reading, I tend to give uh, my students more activities that have to do with that. And I tend to forget they can, they can be different for me. So um, we always have to bear in mind that we are all different and being different, we have to try to reach them in their own multiple intelligence. So I have to create activities that can be good for students that learn through their eyes, through their ears, through their body. And um, the, 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 the more varied our activities are, the better for them. So here we have, again, something that I think it's import, important by Michael Fullen. He says that um, schools must inquire deeper into their own practices, explore new ways to motivate their learners, make use of learning styles, introduce multiple intelligence, integrate learning, and teach thinking. And in the process, discover the passion and moral purpose that makes teaching exciting and effective. And it's that we have to have it all together and at the same time, teach languages. It's what we're doing. Now, uh, Lynn Shelton says that uh, um, her mom uh, was in education and she remembers reading in one of um, her mom's books that about multiple intelligence. And um, she talks about this whole theory about how uh, there are all these different ways you can be intelligent. And she says like eight or 10 or of them or something. And one of them is emotional. And we just talked about that. Emotions are very important. Okay, another thing is, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, then John Gottman says, um, researchers have found that even more than IQ, our emotional awareness and abilities to handle feelings will determine your success and happiness in all walks of your life, including family relationships, and it's true. We do know that uh, um, sometimes um, emotional awareness is more important than being IQ intelligent. And it also applies to learning. So emotions are always related to everything we have ever learned. And um, what I propose is um, to create a learning environment that will be full of happy, happier emotions, developing activities which may appeal to some of the multiple intelligence. I'm not going to bother you with this anymore. Let's go to the activities. So the first one is this one. Uh, in the next um, slide, you'll find the poem. This is a, a very well-known poem and um, a version of a Little Red Riding Hood that I really love. And um, this is, uh, again, from the point of view of the students' instructions. We have to tell them, you're going to listen to a poem story. And each time you hear the words wolf, wolfy, e, uh, you have to make the sound ow. When you hear the words grandma, grandmama, you start pretending to be knitting. Uh, normally they use their pens, so they make a sound. Uh, when you hear little Miss Red Riding Hood, little girl in red, Miss Riding Hood, you sing ha la 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 la. And so what you do? Either you read the poem aloud or you ask one of the students to do it. And all the other students have to um, make the corresponding sound or movement when they hear the words. So to make it easier, I, in the poem, I have kept the, the colors. It's easy. But you'll see it's quite fun because when we start, um, as soon as Wolf and everyone says, oh, begin to feel that e -E -O would like a decent meal, e wow went and knocked on grandma's, and it's a ton. Um, we can't do it now because you are too many for this, 
but in a classroom, even if it is a, a class of 20 or 28, it's quite fun. It's a little bit of noise, but it's quite fun. Then, obviously, when you reach the end of the poem, um, you can read it back without making the noises with the students. And then um, at the end, you'll see that this is a completely different ending. And you can work on that. Or you can ask them, OK, so instead of this uh, last uh, three verses, can you come up, come up with your own last six verses? And you can make a different ending for this um, revolting rhyme of Roald Dahl. Anyhow, you'll have all this. So you can actually use it whenever you want. Now, sorry, I have to keep looking at the watch because otherwise. So uh, this is the one. Now let's go to another one. Now, this time we have um, listening and speaking, which are language skills, obviously. And we have a different skill. In this case, it's drawing. And uh, drawing can be quite kinesthetic, not only kinesthetic, but also um, visual, because you have to really uh, know how to draw or to recognize drawings. This is very, very easy. You, can, you give each of your students a blank A4. So each one has one. And then uh, you, have, you, you get them into pairs and you ask them to sit back to back. OK, so they sit, they sit back to back. And each one of them uh, draws a simple picture on their own A4, um, something like a house with a garden, the sun, an animal, whatever they wish. But it's a simple picture. And they both do that. So they have their pictures. And after um, one of them starts describing his picture or her, well, their drawing to the other. And so the other turns the page where he has uh, drawn his uh, picture and draws the one he thinks that his partner has produced because his partner has is describing it to him okay something like okay so i have a house and it has a a um, triangular roof and it has a chimney and there's the sun and uh, there's a little cow there something like that and the other is this is writing on the back of his own the description that he or she hears. And then they exchange. When they've done that, they finally can meet and show each other the drawings. And it's quite fun because normally they do not correspond exactly to uh, what was there. And they laugh a lot. Oh, he didn't tell me that this was on the right or that you had or that you had grass or something like that. It's quite fun. And at the same time, it trains them describing things and it trains uh, also um, paying attention to details when you listen. So I think it's a good activity and I've had some fun doing it. Let's go to another one. Now this time we have, um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, this is going to stop. Uh, before we start, you, you'll give uh, the students the, the handout that is next to this, and, and they ask them to read it first. Then they hear the song and do the exercises. We should stop at minute 2.16. And then you ask them, you let them hear again the, the song to correct the handout. And then, obviously, if you want, you can uh, let them listen to all the song afterwards. I'm just going to give you the end out and then I'll come back to the video. So the end out is this one. This is a uh, well-known song. It's Stacey B. This song, um, besides the, the language skills, as I told you, uh, also develops emotional skills because it takes us back to what kids like doing and how they are when they are kids and everyone likes to recall their own childhood. And so you see, you have the, the um, part of the song till minute 2.16. And um, the questions are quite easy. So Luke and his dad are riding on a JCB, the boy is, and then you have to see if it is four, five or six. Uh, sitting next to him, the boy's dad looks like what? An ant, a giant, a man, we don't know. 
Uh, they are singing, don't forget your shovel if you want to go to, okay, to work, to run, whatever. His father probably had a hard day, but he has been a good man, good gun, good fun, something that he says. So it's, it's quite easy, but it allows them to pay attention to what they are going to listen because they have to pick the correct one. So we're going back to the poem, to the song. That's a nice song. And let's hear it. Sorry. Technology. What's happening to the sun? Okay, uh, it's a beautiful song, it's there. You are going to have the, the presentation, so you'll have the full song, with the full song. We don't need to listen to it all now. Uh, but probably you have also noticed that um, the song also raises other issues. Uh, Wendy says that uh, he forgets about all the bullies and the teachers and their pets. So um, you can, from there, go somewhere else and talk about these things. And um, I think it's it's a song that is worth listening. And, and it's very clear, I can understand it quite well. So it's a good activity. I can guarantee you they like it. Now, this is the end out I've told you. Let's go to another one. Well, this time uh, we are talking about the imperative, um, imperative in the sense of orders, giving orders. And uh, probably mothers are the best source of imperative sentences. Uh, we all remember what our moms used to tell us. And because they, they are still living with their moms, most of them probably, um, but it, not mom, it can be dad or something, but you have to list as many orders you can remember your mother to have ever given you. This is for the students to do. You can also do it if you want. And then you compare the list with your partner, something like brush your teeth, go to bed, I don't know, so the, the normal orders that moms always um, give us. And then after comparing your list with your partner's list, um, you watch the video and, um, and read, listen and tick each order that matches one in your list. So she 
gives the orders. We are going to um, watch the video and um, read and hear the orders. And we just have to tick the ones that match the list. So let's start. It's a problem because this. Um... Get up now, get up now, get up out of bed. Wash face, brush teeth, come see me. Hit. Here's your clothes and your shoes. Hear the words I said. Get up now, get up and make your bed. Are you hot? Are you cold? Are you wearing that? Where's your books and your lunch and your homework and credit coat and your gloves and your scarf and hat? Don't forget, you gotta feed the cat. It's breakfast, it's what's tell us. It's the most important meal of all. Take vitamins so you will grow up one day too, baby. And don't please remember the orthodontist will be seeing you at three too big. Don't forget your piano lesson is this afternoon, so you must play. Don't shovel too slowly, but hurry. The bus is here. Be careful. Come back here. Did you wash behind your ears? Last night, definitely rough. Would you just play fair? Be polite. Make a friend. Don't forget to share. Working out each term. Never take a day. Get along. Don't make me come down there. Clean your room. Wash your clothes. Put your stuff away. Make your bed. Do it now. Do we have all day? Were you born in a barn? Would you like some hay? Can you eat? Can you hear a word I say? People say, I hope I don't sound like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I think right. that sometimes we, we moms all have sounded like this, at least a little bit. But the thing is that uh, a lot of imperative sentences and it's good fun. Uh, I've also done this with my students and we all laughed and uh, even uh, some orders that they didn't remember were there. I told, oh, yes, yes. But we, don't, we do not say jump a cliff, but normally it's... Um, uh, that uh, or something like that, but it's the equivalent and it's really uh, quite fun. Um, let me just tell you something. This, these um, videos that I'm using here, all of them, I came across them through um, a social network, Facebook or something like that. Each time I, um, I come across something like this on Facebook, I immediately uh, download it and keep it because I, I will think later about something to do with it. And um, that's what I did with these ones that we'll, we have been watching. Okay, so next. Well, this one again, uh, it's a bit emotional. You probably know the original song, which belongs to a uh, famous musical, but it has been adapted. This one um, can be a bit shocking because I, I've had, students crying after uh, watching this. And I was a little bit 
oh god i shouldn't have shown that to him to them but but it's not it's not bad it's good for them sometimes i've done this with all the ch uh, children and i think it's all, all the teenagers and it's good for them to think um differently anyhow so you are supposed again to to give them the end out i'm going to show you the end out like i did in the previous one so um the song as i told you it's well known uh, but it's it has been um, modified in terms of lyrics and so um you have the song and you can um, divide it into four different moments so what I, I want them to do was to look at these four uh, different moments so the first moment is in times gone by so what happened in in the past and um, then the second time is, um, or the second moment, it's when the tigers come, the tigers come at night. And then the third is uh, what um, they are actually still dreaming. And then the, the fourth is what they could have thought. Uh, this is not even uh, that bad if you want to give the third type of conditional because it's 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 a possibility to start doing it after this just just if you want to if you want to do some grammar so let's listen okay going back here we are Okay, so uh, then you can move to this uh, part of the lesson. It's it's quite good, especially I did it with 11th grade um, when we we go to the environment uh, topic, and it it gives you the opportunity of exploring also a lot of uh, vocabulary because there are uh, a lot of things going on. Some of my students didn't know um, how um, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit emotional. Some people also. were saying, sorry, Jean, uh, quite moving. <laughs> oh, beautiful, strong. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, it, is, it, is, it is really <laughs> difficult. Even for me, it's difficult to talk after this. So I know. <laughs> and um, what I was telling you is that we can, uh, they didn't know about the seals, the fact that the seals are still killed in some of the northern countries in Europe um, and Canada. Canada, I think it's already forbidden, but uh, about the ones in the northern countries, not yet. And I know that one of uh, my classes, they decided to do a, um, a project work on this. Uh, because of the uh, of the baby seal, they were so uh, unhappy with this that they decided to work on that. And then they they showed all their class um, what is really happening and uh, the few countries that have forbidden and um, the laws and everything. So it was a good project that came after this. And it's um, it's sad, I know, but we can't live without emotions. I'm sorry. It's very difficult to do so. And so um, we had the moments here. This is another one, another possibility. So we can do naming the moments uh, after writing that to see um, why they decided to name the, the moments like this. And then breathe again the lyrics and confirm the words they heard and fill the blanks with. And uh, underline the words that they think uh, have contributed for the identification of the different moments. It's also good because of the, the verb tenses, so they can get there through the, the verb tenses. It, it's good because you can still work on grammar, uh, working with emotions and the topic. Well, they liked it. And yeah, in spite of the fact that some of the girls cried, they liked it. So then finally, I think I'm handy. Yeah heading to the end. Um, this is a bit different. Again, we have listening, listening, writing, speaking. Again, we are talking about emotions. This is a bit different and it's a bit tough. Uh, this is a girl and she's talking about little girls. So the idea is ask the, your students to um, watch the video and take notes on these three things. First, what people generally think about teenage girls. Uh, second, the examples of the girls who made a difference, who have made a difference, and uh, what little girls can grow up to be. Because in fact, she mentions all the three. So you have to be attentive again. So it's listening with uh, a clear aim. Okay, we're going to. Little girls don't stay little forever. Why would they want to? When we live in a world that has been taught to hate everything to do with teenage girls. We hate the books they read and the bands they like. Is there anything the world makes fun of more than One Direction and Twilight? We call them ditzy and bitchy. And when teenage boys are cruel to them, we say boys will be boys. He's only mean to you because he likes you. But little girls don't stay little forever. They turn into something furious and ugly. They turn into something with sharp edges and a rage that has been built on years of being told that they are delicate and easy to break. I watched on the news the story of a 15-year-old girl, naked and starving, swimming across a 150-acre lake. She climbed out of that lake, dripping and skinny, and she kept running until she was safe. You see, the two men, who had kept her in a cupboard for 29 days, had left her alone. Because after 29 days in a cupboard, a little girl would not be able to escape. But little girls don't stay little forever. They turn into superhuman athletes that can outswim evil, even whilst bleeding and broken and half dead. I watched on the news the story of a 17-year-old girl with a shaved head on national TV, unflinchingly starting a battle cry, days after watching her friends die. Without stuttering or shaking, she stood in front of her country and demanded its laws to change. You see, little girls don't stay little forever. They turn into young politicians who do not give respect to men in suits who haven't earned it. I watched on the news, Kyle Stevens, now a grown woman, stand inches away 
from the man who abused her and 300 other little girls. And she said, little girls don't stay little forever. They turn into strong women who return to destroy your world. And I hope every little girl knows that she is capable of destruction. That for every big thing that will try and hurt her, she can outswim it. That for every law that will try and oppress her, she can fight it. That she can stand inches away from the thing that tried to kill her and show it how enormously it failed. I hope she knows that the moment she was born, she was given a list of things that she cannot do because she is small and breakable and female. And I hope she reads about all those women who shoved that list into their mouth, chewed it up and spat it out because they did not owe shit to the world that thought so little of teenage girls. Well, um, this is a bit strong, but sometimes uh, it's necessary. So it's a, a, a different um, thing that, is, that can also be emotional. And um, it gives us not only a vocabulary, but food for thought, and especially um, it helps us empower uh, our little girls. And it's also good for boys because, well, sometimes the problem uh, about little girls is the fact that the boys, um, they just keep acting like they were told to act. Uh, it's not only their fault because, well, society has been reproducing the same type of behavior and uh, that's what happens. So this is good for both of them. And um, honestly, I think I've um, finished. <laughs> little girls don't oh, stay little. Sorry. Um, oh, thank you. We can now um, talk a little bit <laughs> if you want to. Um, I think I did it faster because this is so different uh, from live sessions. In live sessions, we do um, the activities, which takes longer. And here, it's just basically me speaking and you listening. So it's not exactly the same. So, Nidia. Uh, um, yes. Okay. So, oh, you still had uh, more time because, uh, uh, oh, it's yes. uh, not, just... not four. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So, let's see if. Uh, okay, here I am. <laughs> if we have any questions coming in. Yeah. Not in the Q and A, but people no. are yeah. thanking you. Thank you. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, good. So, no thank questions you. for Maria João. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm always very nervous because I think this is not. I don't. I don't know how to do it um, online. But okay. <laughs> okay. Let uh, Isabel Coelho says my eleventh grade class was shocked. Yes, it's when when she showed was, the, the numbers, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, it's, she it's showed strange. the numbers. Yeah. Hi, Lena. <laughs> yeah. Some people I know. Hi. <laughs> but okay, so if you have any questions um, or something, well, oh, I can help you. Um, I also have. Um, you can always contact me through Happy. It's okay if you want to, and uh, obviously you can have the the PowerPoint. Uh, it's, it's all right with me. And uh, well, <laughs> I hope you, you've enjoyed and you use it. That's the most important thing. And sometimes, you know, it's just those things on the internet that we just come across and we think, this might be good for this or that. And that's what I do, okay? <laughs> yes, everyone is thanking you. Um, um, now go and vote, okay? Because it's time <laughs> to do also. Since I have time, I'm going to vote. <laughs> Okay, so it's in the PowerPoint. Yes, everything will be in the in the the PTT that Maria João and other speakers from the other sessions will share with us, and it will be available for everyone. Okay, so I would I would ask you to bear with us. So let's have a a longer break. But yes. <laughs> um, I would uh, strongly uh, ask you to uh, be uh, be with us again at uh, 4.30, okay? So it's a brief moment for the closing session. 
and just to give you the results from uh, Assembleia Geral. Okay, yes. so you still are, uh, you, you still can vote as uh, Maria João was saying, so mm -hmm. you are still in time to do it. So yep. thank you very much, Maria João. Uh, we you. had some <laughs> okay, nice yeah. activities to put into practice yeah. uh, and yeah, lots yeah. of emotional uh, awareness going around. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. Bye bye everyone. See bye -bye. you in 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, see you later. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye. Proceed. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye bye, Jean. Bye bye. See you. Bye. <laughs> see Thank you. you.